As we continue talking about solution curves without a solution, we're going to talk about another way that we can classify differential equations. Namely, if the differential equation is an autonomous differential equation or not. If we consider a first order differential equation where x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable, then we can write that differential equation in normal form by writing the first derivative of y with respect to x is equal to some function in x and y. Now, there are going to be differential equations where when we write them in normal form like this, the independent variable or the dependent variable is not appearing in that function. In fact, when the independent variable, the x variable, does not appear, we say that that first order differential equation is autonomous. And we can actually write the normal form of that autonomous first order differential equation as the first derivative of y with respect to x is equal to a function of y. Now, these differential equations have some really interesting properties. When we find the zeros of this function, we call them the critical points, the equilibrium points, or the stationary points, all of those interchangeably. So a real number to be a zero of this function means when we plug that number in for y, it's going to be zero. A lot of times when we've solved for zeros before, say in algebra or in calculus, we've been using the independent variable as what we were plugging in, and this results in behaviors that we observe along the horizontal or x-axis. Since we're talking about zeros of a function in terms of y, this is going to result in behaviors that we see along the vertical axis. If we have a value c that is a critical point of our autonomous first order differential equation, then we say y of x equals zero is a constant solution of the autonomous differential equation. So let's consider the autonomous first order differential equation dp dt equals p times the quantity a minus bp. The first thing we want to do with this autonomous first order differential equation is find its constant solutions. We do so by finding the zeros of the function p times a minus bp. So we'll set that function equal to zero. Now we notice that it is the product of two terms. So we have a property that tells us that that occurs when either or both of the terms is zero. So we'll set both of the terms equal to zero to find the possible constant solutions. So the first term is p, so setting that equal to zero gives us p equals zero as a constant solution. And if we set a minus bp equal to zero and solve for p, we'll find p equals a divided by b. So this gives us our constant solutions or our equilibrium values or our stationary values for this autonomous first order differential equation. Once we have those values, we can construct something called a phase portrait. In a phase portrait, what we do is we draw the vertical axis, the p-axis in this case, and we'll label on that axis where the constant solutions fall. So we'll label zero and a over b. And then we check the values above, in between, and below all of those constant solutions to find whether our differential equation is increasing or decreasing on those intervals. So in this case, if we check values greater than a over b for our p value, then we'll find that our first term, p, is positive. A minus b times p is going to be negative whenever p is greater than a over b. So we'll have a positive number times a negative number, which will be negative. So our derivative, dp dt, will be negative, which means that our function will be decreasing, which is why we've drawn an arrow down on our face portrait 
above a over b. Now in between 0 and a over b, we notice that our p-value is going to be positive, and a minus bp will also be positive. So we'll have a positive number times a positive number, resulting in a positive derivative, which means our function will be increasing on the interval from 0 to a over b. So we'll put an arrow going up on our phase portrait in that interval. And then finally, considering values for p less than 0, we'll find that p itself will be negative, and a minus bp will be positive. So we'll have a negative value times a positive value, which will be a negative value for our derivative overall. That means that our function will be decreasing, so we put a down arrow on that interval in our phase portrait. So our phase portrait is simply that vertical line, that is our p-axis, with our constant solutions identified, and then the arrows on each of the intervals indicating what the function is doing on those intervals. Now you'll notice in this case the constant solution a over b has arrows pointing to it from both above and below. That means that this constant solution, or this equilibrium value, is considered to be an attractor, or a stable equilibrium value. You'll also notice that zero has arrows pointing away from it, both above and below it. This makes zero a repeller or an unstable equilibrium value. If we had a case where coming from above or below, the arrow was going towards the constant solution and on the other side, it was going away from it, so it's not the same. The arrows are going both to and away, depending on whether you look above or below it. This is called a semi-stable constant solution. Now, given this phase portrait, we can actually use what we found here to sketch what the solution curves to this differential equation must look like. So I've drawn a P and a T axis here, and I've put in horizontal asymptotes at our two constant solutions, 0 and a over b. Now, since I know solutions must be going towards a over b as t values increase, then any value above a over b is going to be decreasing towards a over b. So I can draw that curve in. I can also look at the values below zero and see that they are decreasing or pushing away from zero as t values get greater. So I can draw that curve in. And then the curve in between zero and a over b needs to be going away from zero and towards a over b as t values increase. So that leads to this kind of S shape. Now you'll notice I've labeled P sub zero values. This is depending on where our initial condition is, that will determine what shape our solution curve takes. Now, one thing to note, if we drew a direction field for our autonomous differential equation, if you look across, the horizontal, all of the slopes on the direction field, on the slope field, would be the same. And if you look vertically down a line on the direction field, all of the slopes will likely be changing along the way. And it can give you a really good idea of what the shape of the graph is just from a single vertical line in that direction field. Now the solution curves that I sketched in have all of these initial values for t that I've plotted, but within those intervals below zero, between zero and a over b, and above a over b, within those each of those intervals, the solution can change a little bit, but the shape overall will stay the same. If those initial values are shifted up and down within those intervals, 
what's going to happen is it's going to shift the solution curve to the left or the right. This is what we know as the translation property. It says if y of x is a solution of an autonomous differential equation, dy dx equals f of y, then y sub 1 of x equals y of x minus k, where k is a constant, is also a solution. So we can shift along the horizontal axis with no problems, and it will remain a solution curve to our autonomous first-order differential equation.